So this is a setup here that I find myself using a lot. Uh, basically the idea is that you have any number of UI elements. You don't know how many you're gonna have, but you're going to need to have all of them attached to some outside source that when you click on these buttons, something happens. And so this could be an inventory screen or a start screen, and these could be levels and you could instance them. You know, you could do whatever you want with this, uh, but this is the easiest way to do it. So I use a background of some sort, and I usually put the script up here at the very top, and then I'll have a scroll container, and then I'll have the child that be a VBox container. And then I'll usually instance my nodes inside of here, and that way I can scroll through them, and I can have as many as I need, and also this will separate them automatically, and I can come down here to custom constraints and even add a little more separation between them. And if I run that now, that makes it easy for you to adjust stuff there. And then I instance all that through code onto this. I just add them as children. And I found it's best to do it this way. I usually make a holder of some sort and then I'll place all the content within that holder, much like uh, a div for HTML. So in this holder, I have a button, some text, and then the, uh, the icon off to the side. So we have the button, the text inside of it, and the icon off to the side. And then this is the holder, the purple area. And I find that's a very efficient way to do it because now that I have the uh, button inside of this holder, I can just change its rec position very easily. So I can set this to zero and then I'll run it. And you can see that we move the X coordinate of our button uh, down to zero. And same with our icon here. Our icon I have uh, set relative to our button. So I can, let me see, uh, icon rect position dot x and we'll go minus, minus 20. Go ahead and run that. And we can see it doesn't really look good, but you know, it does uh, appear 20, 20 units to the uh, left on the x-axis. Let's, uh, let's do 100. All right, there we go. So you basically get the idea there. So this is an issue that I ran into and I think a lot of people will run into when they start making more advanced UIs with Godot. I can run this scene and I have a bunch of buttons over here but I can't hover over them and I can't click on them and my scroll bar won't scroll. And the reason is because I have this color rect in front that is invisible and that is actually stealing all of our input. So if I run the scene again, we can see that uh, is overlaying everything and stealing all of our input and down here I can just barely sneak past it. So the way to uh, just have the mouse input pass through that is to go to this mouse right here on our color rec node and then instead of stop we want to set this to ignore. And we can hover over filter to see what it does here. Basically ignore is just going to ignore the mouse and go right through to the next uh, layer of UI. And it's coming up the scene tree so this one is in front of that one. So if I run that now we can scroll and we can also click on all of these. Another issue you'll run into is you'll have a huge picture that you're going to want to use somewhere that you don't want it to be that big. This is 700 by 700 pixels and this is just that image down here that I am using to put off to the side of my button. If I run this right now, this is how I want it to look. And so to get it to be like that, you have to first set the texture. I just set the texture there. If I just run this without any further instruction, it'll appear huge. So the first thing we need to do is set the minimum size. And if I run that, nothing changed. We need to also add this line right here. We need to set the expand property on our icon, on our texture rec to true. 
So if we do that, we can see we then get the desired result. Uh, this property confused me a little bit. I realized that if I do this and I set the rect size after I set the rect min size, it will mess it all up and make it appear big again. So, and then if I do this, let's see what happens. Yeah, it still won't work. So uh, make sure to set the rect min size and don't set the rect size because that'll mess it all up. So now we've instanced these through code and we know how to position them, but we want to connect them to a signal. And you can see down here that I'm getting a uh, output based on whichever button I'm pressing. So the way we go about doing that is after we create the button here, we use the connect and we connect it to the press signal. So if you're unfamiliar with that, here's a just a regular texture button. And then if we go to our node tab over here, we can see all of its signals. So this is the press signal, so that is whenever anybody just presses on the button, it'll admit this. So we can grab that through our code by using connect and then passing in this string pressed, whatever the name of the signal we're trying to get is. We then call self, which is uh, telling it to use this script right here and to access this function on this script ourselves. So we have that function down here and we are passing in our bindings and that is just any extra arguments that we want to pass in. So passing in items here is just passing in whatever loop of the array we are on. So whichever button uh, is assigned in this loop of the array. So that'll give us the button we pressed. And uh, let me go ahead and run that to demonstrate it. Button A, button B. So yeah, and then even though you're passing in an array here, so if I add another, I'll just add a, a string, we put that right there. And if I try and run this now, uh, we're not getting any sound and you can see the debugger is going up. That's because I'm getting an error and we are passing in too many arguments. So if I now add a, another one down here, uh, I'll just call this one string as well, and then I'll save it. Now if we run it, we're good to go. So even though we are passing in an array up here, it does not translate to an array down here, it translates to separate arguments. All right, and so here's another problem that I ran into, and that was with uh, <clears throat> labels. So I have this label here, and I want it to be in the middle. So normally, if I was gonna do that just through nodes, I would use the V-align uh, center, and then center there, and that should put it in the middle of its parent. But how do we do that through code? Well, we have to use uh, this right here. We have to call that uh, enum. So we say, text align equals align center and then the align equals label dot the align center uh, that's not too complicated but then even though we're calling that you'll see it still doesn't work so the problem is we have to set an anchor so if i go down here and i set an anchor there and i honestly am not exactly even sure why this works but i guess it makes sense when you don't think about it now we can see it's centered in the middle and I can get rid of this and it should center it one way and then we'll do the other way just to prove a point. So yeah, make sure you always set an anchor if you're trying to vertically align things and then this is just your margin so you can add to this and that will move our text further away from wherever you set your anchor. So that uh, frustrated me and I just wanted to share that.